Hi, I'm Erin Marcus, former corporate executive turned entrepreneur and founder and CEO of Conquer Your Business. Welcome to the Ready Yet podcast. We're excited to bring you more than 100 episodes of interviews and insights designed to help entrepreneurs get the financial and emotional freedom they need in order to build a business and a life they're proud of. Welcome, welcome to this episode of the Ready Yet podcast. I'm excited for today's guest, Rick Ivanovich. We have been talking about Business is Unusual, which is the name of your book, which I love because I think as I get older, (laughs) you can tell me, I think this is a, a passage of time thing. What we think is change and what we think is unusual yeah, it's different than it was before, but what do they say? The only constant change is change. You can decide if it's good. You can decide if it's bad, but it doesn't ever really go away. So I can't wait to have this conversation and hear about your take on all of this. So before we dive into that, why don't you give people a little more formal introduction to who you are and what it is that you do? Thanks for having me, Aaron, and thanks for that quick intro. Now, before I dive into and actually answer the question you just asked i'm i'd like to quickly share a a core belief that i have Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's that we all have the potential each and every one of us to be architects of change in this era that we're in at the moment this time we're in it's it's really defined by constant and sort of never-ending transformation and our task is not just to keep up and sort of keep our head above water. It's it's more than that. But we have to actively shape the path forward. So maybe we'll cover it today. But, you know, when we look at me and my past, I, I started off stacking shelves in, in a supermarket uh, and learning the ropes of, of people management. Uh, and then... I moved into the more precise world of accounting. Yes, I am an accountant. <laughs> That's <laughs> and... <laughs> okay. You're still, you're still friendly and happy. Where do you, where you, you're good. We're good. Yeah, I have yeah, a background it's in financial okay. services with a lot of actions <laughs> and things. You're, you're golden. You're fine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's good. And, and not to s- negatively or positively I, stereotype exactly. accountants. I was not a podcast recently. It says, Rick, you're not an accountant. You've got a character. (laughs) And I know some very friendly, very extroverted accountants. So I think that, I think that stereotype has changed a little bit. So anyway, accounting is great. Anyway, so I I moved into the more precise world of accounting myself and then later navigated the more constantly evolving landscapes of tech and humans. So my story itself demonstrates the power of transformation and continuous learning, and the significant impact that each and every one of us can make. I believe that our actions every single day, it doesn't matter if they're big or they're small, they do shape our future. And as we discuss stuff today, Erin, I want everyone listening to remember this. You are your brand, and every single decision Every choice that you make is part of the unique story that you're crafting for yourself. How you react, how you adapt, and how you innovate in the face of all of this change and chaos, if you want, of what's going on around us, will define your story and, more importantly, your legacy. So this belief inspiring each of us to aim for consistently higher achievement is the cornerstone of my work, my life purpose. So as we dive into our conversation today, let's not just think about adapting to change, but about how we can define it. After all, when we embrace our unique qualities and strive for personal growth, we are not just participants, but catalysts in our ever-changing business as unusual world. So let's get into this, Erin. All right. The thing that I love about what you're saying, I have a different way of phrasing a very similar 
concept. The tagline in my business is be in charge, take action, get results. And one of the things that I also have as a core value is self-determination, right? Our absolute superpower as humans is our power to choose and to take that a step further, a power to create, to your point, create our own path. It's interesting to me how many people don't feel that way, right? They're waiting for someone else to set a path. They're waiting for, right? They're sitting back, complaining about what they don't like. And yet it's easy to consider them weak or victim-y, but truthfully, most people don't know that they have a different option. I, you know, to be a little more empathetic, I don't think people realize how much influence you can have over your own journey. So where does somebody, and I would be interested in your take on that because there's you and me, and I think we're we're all surrounded by people who are on who are in control of their own journey because of who what we choose to do and for business and 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 yet there's i would say more people don't realize that they can have this and do this than people who do realize it i think you you've touched you've touched on it the the key thing is that people need to realize that there is always a choice so one can choose to try and shape and control our own destiny and what we're doing, or we can choose not to. Is that, okay, so I can tell by the way you have an accent, you're not from the United States, and I believe if I'm guessing correctly, you're living in a country you didn't grow up in, plus you, right, so, you, and you're you're spending your life all over the world, really. Is it a... American problem? Or are you seeing this more universally? It's this mixture of entitlement, right? The things should just be done for me, as well as a lack of realization you have, you can take control, is that it seems so prevalent here to me. Are you seeing that elsewhere? Or you kind of want to shake a stick at the Americans and say, wake up. In interesting, interesting question. I'd say it's a universal problem. It's everywhere. Potentially, the way that you see it, you're maybe looking through the lens of, hey, you get it. You're choosing what to do. You know this. Why doesn't anyone else in this country get it? OK, I'll put that aside because I'm not from the States, don't understand the States, so I can't really comment. <laughs> yes, I, I'm a Brit, but it, uh, I, it's, it's similar in other countries. So, so where, where's the problem really coming from? What's the root cause of the issue? The root cause of the issue is, is maybe in, in the cultures that, that we come from, certain cultures, which includes our education system. Mm -hmm. You know, the sort of factory education system that we all know is out of date dictates that, you know, we follow the curriculum, you know, we sit, we sit in our chair and, and we follow the rules. Okay. And the rules say you need to learn this and you need to look at things in a certain way. And, you know, as long as you, answer the questions correctly, based on what we've taught you, you'll do okay. You know, that's the that's the story. But it doesn't quite work like that, does it? Because no, it the moment not. you step out of that classroom, you go out into the real life world, the textbooks have all disappeared. There is no real curriculum that, you know, the tests are going to be based on whatever is thrown at you. So you're not necessarily going to know the answers. And for a lot of people, that's rather unsettling. And that doesn't really compute because if we've been educated to say, well, you know, we're going to give you the knowledge that you need to succeed. And then you leave school or even go leave university 
and you're still not very employable or employers say you're not very employable because you don't know how to work and there's so much that you don't know, it, it, it's all a bit of a challenge, isn't it? So possibly the way that things are, they're not helping us. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the adopt, system does not ad, ad, seem ad, ad, to be working on our behalf. No. <laughs> yeah, you know, to to adopt the mindset that yeah, we have a choice. We can say no. We can, you know, choose our direction. Um we don't have to conform necessarily. Okay? Whereas there's still too many systems that are pushing us in a certain direction and it doesn't fit everyone. Okay. And I believe, you know, this is why I've adopted this business as unusual. When we look at the great resignation, the great reshuffle, the great insert whatever word that you want, it it's decisions by people to move. Like why are they moving? In some cases, because the grass is greener, but I think in a lot of cases because where they are isn't where they want to be. So I, I see that as sort of positive because it's a realization that we're in the wrong place, okay? Unfortunately, they move somewhere else and that's not the right place either. Uh, and so they move again. And so we keep, work, you know, that's why the great, great reshuffle or the great whatever you want to call it hasn't ended yet because we're all still trying to work out where should we be, okay? And, and to loop right back to the original question and what we we're talking about, is yeah, people have a choice, uh, and we need to start making some choices. We can't just wait, right? You know, and I think there was a big movement with the reshuffle and whatever because so many people have been waiting. And I think that is the the danger. I think when I when I look at the Great Resignation, and I always I always laugh about it because. I didn't need a social movement to tell me to quit every job I hated. <laughs> like if I hated the job, I just didn't stay there. But to your point, most people, they didn't know what they wanted instead, right? They were moving away from a painful situation. And the problem with that, my opinion, so I'd love to get your take on this. If you're, if you make a move to avoid pain, as opposed to doing something to reach for pleasure, right? Reach because you have drive. You will stop the second the pain is alleviated because all you're trying to do is to alleviate the pain, right? Alleviate this discomfort. So, so many people quit their jobs because they hated their situation, but they didn't have a better alternative. They didn't have an intended alternative that they were suited for, right? They opened their own businesses, but they didn't realize this is not grass is always greener. Like if it were easy, everyone would be doing it, right? So it was only half the battle. Half the battle is stepping away from what you don't like. But if you don't have the coping mechanisms and the knowledge and the drive to create what it is you do want, it's just a different version of frustration. Absolutely. I, I, I agree with you. People are leaving or too many people, because let's not generalize it. Yeah. Too many people are leaving for the wrong reasons. Uh, and they're leaving because they're avoiding pain or they don't like something. They mm -hmm. don't want something. But there are the, the it's the wrong question being asked. The question individuals need to ask themselves is what do they want? and have absolute clarity about that. Now, most people can say, you know, when asked the question, they'll say what they don't want, yeah. but they're still not saying what they want. So I don't like this job and my job sucks because of, you know, okay, <laughs> right. sucks and you're not very happy, but what do you want? Okay. Otherwise, if you don't, if you don't have that clarity, as you said, you'll jump, you'll go somewhere else that pain or whatever has gone away. And like, why am I in this new job? I don't like this either. <laughs> right. It's the pattern repeats because to, right. You're avoiding, you're not actually solving the underlying problem. And I, it is very true. People, I ask people all the time, what do you want? And they, they either, they can't answer it 
or what they give me is a top, especially with small businesses, I'll be like, what do you want? And they'll give me a top gross revenue, right? A top line gross revenue, which means absolutely nothing without more information, right? There's a million different versions of a million dollar business. Which one of them do you want? Even, Which, even on that, even on that point, they want a, a business that does a million dollars turnover or whatever it does. Is that what they really want? Right. No, that that's just a measure of the volume of business and the, maybe the value of business. But what do they really want? Question still hasn't been answered. How much time do you want to spend on things? And I, I think. I do think exactly like you said, the school system creates good factory workers. That's what it does. That's what it did. That's what it was designed for. But the challenge of entitlement when mixed with not knowing what you want, it, it's creating a perfect storm. Personally, I just don't understand how any of these folks are being able to pay their bills. Because it's okay. So tell me more. Great. <laughs> tell, 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 tell me more about this this concept of entitlement it doesn't even have to be a negative it doesn't even have to be a negative spoiled brat necessarily connotation i mean there is that version of it but the pendulum swings back and forth right with generations and you have the baby boomers, for example, right? If you really look at it, the greatest generation are World War II veterans. They raised a bunch of hippies, right? Nothing could be further from them. And then our, you know, peace, love community, right? They raised a bunch of 80s babies, which we were feral children that went into the, you know, decade of greed, right? So the pendulum swings back and forth. And so then you have my generation, Gen X, who, like I said, raised ourselves. It's absolutely hysterical. The jokes about it are very funny. And then we turned into a bunch of helicopter parents and raised a bunch of adults who don't know how to necessarily do things for themselves because of how much was done for them. So maybe entitlement in some way is too strong of a word. The, you know, the participation trophy generation. So when you raise a, a generation who believes you're always supposed to be happy and everything is supposed to be fine and you don't necessarily have to get over adversity in order to receive and they don't know what they want, and the school system was created for good factory workers, which they were told they don't have to be, you create this little perfect storm of, you know, how do they get out of this? Good point. So so I see where you're coming from. At the end of the day, it it's really saying that some people just aren't aware mm -hmm. aren't aware they lack the education or they they lack the knowledge not their fault necessarily that's how they were raised yeah whether whether it's through society or you know their parents or whatever you know it is as it is but people e even those those people who didn't come up in such an entitled environment they can also still be stuck and still unaware you know the the fact that people need to learn but need you know we need to re-emphasize that yes you do have a choice yes you, you know you you that's why i say we need to be an architect of change we can't just react because yes. things are happening around us and then bitch about it because we don't like what you know how we've reacted mm -hmm. well if you don't if you don't like that then you have to change what you're doing and you have to be more proactive and you have to plan exactly where you're going to go and how you're going to get there i mean you know and if you haven't tried it try it you know how, you, you can't brush it off if you haven't given it a go yet you know when it comes to this happiness thing yeah that that was a bit misleading to saying that we're supposed to be happy. That was very misleading, wasn't it? 
and 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 just to get the generation straight i'm a baby boomer by the way so i i have my own lens of looking at things but so linked to knowing what you want is also linked to what is the point of you mm. what is your purpose what is yeah. your life purpose you know and I only realized mine in the last five years, which means I realized it rather late. That wasn't really a problem. I didn't, I didn't really, I think, although I didn't have a life purpose written out and, and I was driving to all the time, which I am today, what I was doing anyway, and what I've come up as my current life purpose is what I've been doing for decades. Okay. I, it just wasn't put into words. And I feel that it's more and more important for people especially if they're caught in this great reshuffle <laughs> and they're moving here, there and everywhere, searching for something or running away from something doesn't matter. It's, 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 it's still a bit like the, you know, the Alice in Wonderland where Alice yes. is speaking to the cat <laughs> and says like, which way shall I go? And the cat's saying, well, where is it you want to go? And Alice says, I don't know. There's a, it really doesn't matter which way you go then. <laughs> And, and and that's what people are, I feel people are doing. And maybe they don't even realize that they're doing that. I mean, you said yourself, then maybe they're making the same mistake again and again. I mm -hmm. mean, how many times do they need to make that same mistake before they realize that, hang on, I'm making the same mistake. <laughs> Feels um, like I've been here before. What? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I, I think there needs to be an awakening or a greater awareness Um the there is a better way we do need clarity we do need a direction we do need to individually make a decision of yeah. what it is that we really want okay um that has a real meaning that has a real purpose that is something that we might wish or even want to spend our entire rest of life doing okay mm -hmm. if we've got that clarity yeah then we know where to go and you know we can set goals and progress and grow and and basically be happy <laughs> well and I, I do think the thing that i think that is very cool and very amazing is as much as people were not necessarily prepared to do this there has never been a time for it to have been easier to do this right we live in a world with such access to information, with so many opportunities, with so many lanes that were never there before. You know, historically, people only lived within 10, 15 miles of where they, you know, 30 miles of where they grew up. And now I, I live and work all over the world. And so... Yes, that can be a little overwhelming also when there's an infinite number of options. It can be a little overwhelming to choose. But I, if you really think about it, there's never been a time where this type of change has been more possible than right now. Absolutely. T t totally agree. And again, this is why you know, I like calling things business as unusual. There, there's nothing normal about what's going on no it's all new and it's it's not going to stop the 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 pace of change is picking up the the way that we sh i won't use the word should the the way that individuals work is becoming a more individual thing yes and there's no right way yes. and there's no wrong way that that there's an infinite number of, 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 of permutations and we each need to work out what we want. <laughs> I, it's but so, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, it's <laughs> so simple, but it's not easy, right? It's so simple. Oh yeah. It's so straightforward. It's so simple, but it's not, you know, if it were easy, everyone would be doing it type of thing. I get it. We're go we're up against neuroscience. We're up against society upbringing. We're up against family mm. history. We're up against a lot of things. So yes, it's not always easy, but it really is so simple. 
And for me, as I'm listening to you, I'm trying to think about like, okay, if there would be one thing, one piece of advice, I'll give mine and then we'll give yours. Mm -hmm. If there would be one piece of advice to give people, one way to behave, to interact with the world, to move towards these options. As I get older, I find that staying curious as opposed to judgmental, like just being open curiosity and open interest in all of it benefits me greatly as opposed to deciding and judging whether something is right or wrong before we've even talked about it, right? But that open curiosity for me has been a really good place to start, right? Isn't that interesting? I wonder what's possible. What would you give as a place for people to start? I would agree with the curiosity. We 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 need to learn how to be be that kid again, yeah. and and ask why all the time. Um, I mean, you know, it's uh, again testament to our bad upbringing. <laughs> we 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 condition kids, we condition children. They start asking why, and and they're told to you know they're shut down basically. So that we, we we teach them to be not curious, but then we want them to be curious, which doesn't make a lot of sense. And it, it's crazy that there you know there are even consulting techniques called the five whys, you know, which took some very intelligent people to dream up in big consulting companies to teach us how to ask the question why when we already know that we were born when it, right? it was beat out of us as children right yeah i know so so <laughs> it, it 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 doesn't make sense so yeah so be curious be childlike you know bring play i mean play play is fun right play is how we learn and yet that got thrown away as well that got taken out of us when when we became adults okay and 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 yet what's been learned during the last few years of the pandemic is the way that we educate people is not very good. <laughs> we have to change it because it's now all, all online. It, it, it's very, very different. And and all the studies that, that I've looked at and all the discussions I've had is we've got to bring play back into it. Well, come on, we knew how to do all of this until we beat it out of people. Uh, so yeah, so let's bring some play and fun back into things. Because if it was fun to work, then maybe we wouldn't have a lot of problems that we're faced with so true so, so. But, but going back to you know not just curiosity the the thing that i always stick with is kaizen i, I like the word kaizen mm. it's one of my core values is my my second core value as i say it and my interpretation of kaizen is not just you know it's it's real japanese roots which is a change for good which is continuous improvement even tiny 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 improvement yeah. i Additionally, reframe it to be a lifelong learning. So learn something new every single day. If something goes wrong at work or whatever, okay, it means that there was a breakdown in the process that we put together. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic opportunity to fix what was broken, apply a bit of Kaizen. Oh, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> All right, so we need to change it to this. Wonderful. What's the problem? Okay. Right. I also agree with you on the on the on the judgment. I'm a very judgmental person, but that's something I'm trying to beat out of myself <laughs> uh, by trying not to be judgmental anymore. Trying to be more open-minded and not just the first part of open-minded by seeing other people's perspectives. I mean the second part of being open-minded is not only seeing other people's perspectives but being prepared to change your own perspective as in okay i was wrong then you know ad admit okay my perspective was maybe too blinkered and i need to change it you know i i i do that i have a in my in my notebook i i have i don't know if you can see this yeah uh, but, well you can't see it big screen it's the number six Okay, so if you put a, a number six down, you show it to one person, they will see a six, and you show it to another person, they will see a number nine. Right. So you just show it to two different people, and I say, what do you see? And they see what they see, and it's not the same. 
it's just showing that it's a different perspective of the same thing. Okay, so I want to be really difficult. It's neither a six nor a nine. It's actually a a a pencil marking on a piece of paper. Is another way of looking at it. That's a third way of looking at exactly the same thing. So these are different perspectives of the same thing, and it really really helps to look at the same situation differently. And we need to do that. Uh, we need to do that in order to 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 learn different perspectives. And also to adopt that mindset of not being judgmental. Absolutely. The way that I describe that perspective concept is you and I could go to the scariest horror movie ever made. And we can sit next to each other and watch that same movie. And you could have the absolute time of your life. And I could end up needing therapy. The movie didn't change, right? It was our perspectives of that movie <laughs> that produced our realities. And it's so easy not to go in a completely left turn here. But when someone has strong personalities, and I, I, you know, if I do my personality profiles, I come out very strong in some places. And that's just like it. It's we have to work to not be judgmental on the other perspectives. It's just, right, staying curious. I always go back to staying curious. Isn't that interesting that I thought that horror movie was the worst thing I've ever done and someone else thought it was great. Isn't that interesting? And why are they so weird, right? Like, but staying curious about all of it. <laughs> Absolutely. So if people want to continue this conversation with you and learn more about it and grab a copy of your book for sure and learn how can they, I call it being in charge, how can they have business as unusual? And I'm such a big fan of pave your own path. Mm -hmm. What is the best way for them to find you, get a hold of you, interact with you, all of the things? Good question. So listeners who are interested in continuing a conversation with me, uh, learning, maybe learning more about me or exploring more of the insights from, from my journey, the best way to connect with me is to go to my website. And my website is my name, rickivanovich.com. If you don't want to go there, the other place you'll find me on social media is on LinkedIn. Okay, I'm very, very active there. And all you need to do is do a search for my name, Rick Ivanovich. It's a very unique name, and I believe there is only one person on this planet, and you're looking at them with this name. Okay, it. Google it seriously. Just <laughs> you're, you were my the name. number one, yes. Here no, it no, it's the only one. There is no right. other person on the planet with that name, which is really quite unusual. Yes, I I have a, a doctor for years, and there's another Aaron Marcus that goes to that doctor. And I get very excited when I go because they're forever grabbing the wrong chart. But <laughs> I consider it a compliment because the other Aaron Marcus is 15 years younger than me. So I figure if they keep grabbing the wrong chart, I must look okay <laughs> for my age. So we will make sure that we have all of these links and make it really easy. Put them in the show notes so that people can want, you know, you're just one click away from everybody. But thank you for your time. And I know in your part of the world, it is well past your bedtime. So thank you for staying awake and spending time with me today. And I love your perspective and your different takes on a similar journey. I think the more people need to you know, land differently and more people hear it because it's absolutely one of my core values as well. So thank you, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you very much, Erin. You know, I, I want to leave everyone with a final thought. Yes. Just remember, everyone who's listening, we are not just a participant in this ever-changing world, but we are architects shaping the course of our lives, our careers, and the world and the environment around us. So I encourage each and every single one of you to embrace change and define it rather than just adapt and react to it. Be that catalyst in your own business as unusual world. And the transformation starts with you. And I'm really eager to hear more about your journeys so please reach out to me 
as Erin said, they'll be in the show notes. Awesome. Okay, Erin, I'd like to express my gratitude for, for, for letting me uh, on your podcast today and, and, and sharing some of my thoughts. It's been a fun and a fascinating conversation. And I hope your listeners have enjoyed it as much as I have. Absolutely. And to all, all the folks listening, I really appreciate your time and attention. I really look forward to hearing from some of you and learning from your experiences, your journeys, your perspectives, and sharing more in-depth future discussions. So thank you again, Erin, and to all our listeners for this wonderful exchange. Hope to see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Ready Yet podcast. I truly enjoy bringing these stories of success and inspiration to you. Please join us in our mission to empower entrepreneurs to be in charge of their businesses and in charge of their lives by sharing this with anyone you know who would benefit from our tactical and motivating advice, leaving us a review, and letting us know if there are any particular topics you would really appreciate hearing about. See you next time.